I got you. <laughs> <laughs>
Very similarly to Ric Flair's retirement speech a couple years ago, uh, Undertaker came out at the end of that speech. This year, as Shawn Michaels comes out in that main event segment, before he can even begin talking, The Undertaker's music begins to play. And uh, no, it's not going to be another challenge for the third year in a row, although uh, I'm sure some people may have been thinking that. (laughs) Undertaker... (laughs) He's in full gear, he's got the jacket on, he's got the hat, he comes out and he just pauses at the top of the ramp while Shawn Michaels is in the ring and he just kneels down and a little tip of the cap to Shawn Michaels, turns around and walks backstage. And uh, (laughs) Homer Simpson. (laughs) I know you and I both kind of speculated, like, did Shawn Michaels know this was going to happen? I don't know. He, He seems... Very genuine in his reaction yeah. to it. He seems honestly touched and surprised by that before he begins talking. Uh, I think it was a surprise. I do as well. Again, I don't remember if he's ever gone on record saying one way or another, but just his reaction to it, it looked like just the way he kind of welled up, you know, and, you know, his, his eyes did. It looked like it was legit, you know, so. Um, I'm sure he was like, crap, what are we doing? Like, Vince has got me again. Or something. <laughs> Who knows? But then when Taker just tips his cap to him, it's like, oh, I got it. And, like, yeah, the rest of the speech is fantastic. And just being, you know, him talking about his kids and stuff like that and going home. And I was just, to me, as a dad, too, it was, like, man, really touching to me. I was, like, It was hard to make it to the speech. So, Absolutely. all the feels, man. It was beautiful. I will say one part has not aged as well because – the crowd is chanting for wow. one more match, one more match. And Sean says, ah, I'm going to do my best to keep my word to the Undertaker and truly retire. And he tried. <laughs> he did He did do his yeah. best. But uh, we'll get to that not too far from here. Uh, we'll get to that fairly quickly on another day. But beautiful speech, well worth watching or revisiting. And uh, just another factoid that's going to play into this build a little bit is that the next uh, – the next night, or the next Friday night on SmackDown on April 2nd, 2010, Jack freaking Swagger cashes in the Money in the Bank briefcase that he won at WrestleMania 26 on Chris Jericho to become the World Heavyweight Champion in a, uh, I would say, fairly disastrous run with the World Heavyweight title, man. It was... Uh, you know, I like Jack Swagger more than you do. I know you've mentioned your hatred of him oh, quite a bit. Yeah. Still can't. He's <laughs> awful. He's not one of my favorites, but uh, I have liked some things he's done. And, you know, I believe in making new stars, but this was a lot like what we talked about with Seamus a few weeks ago on the podcast. This was just yeah. way too soon. And instead of having the title elevate the guy. This guy actually brought down the world title and yep. kind of hurt the whole SmackDown brand, in my opinion, by having this guy be the champion at this point in time. Right. It would have been fine if it was a year later. I don't know. They built him up a little bit, but just having that shock value for shock value doesn't work all the time, man. Like, And you just did it with Sheamus like four months ago. Like, Why are you doing it again? I don't get it, man. But yeah, not one of my favorite guys. The best things he's ever done to me are always somebody else's with them, like him and <laughs> Cesaro. Yeah. Like that was fun because of Cesaro, not because of him. Him and uh, Zeb Coulter, that was fun because of Zeb Coulter. I do not like him at all. I don't like him as whatever his name is now in AEW. I think he sucks, man. I just can't. He's get off my TV, man. I don't like this guy. But it all started right here. So well, don't say uh, that to Jr. Man, I'll throw some barbecue no, sauce. I'll at I'll tell you. Jr. Sure, it's delicious. I want the mustard base. He always puts it over on his podcast. Oh no, mustard sir! Base. No way, man. <laughs> no, no, me neither. Me neither. So, well, um, we're gonna <laughs> speaking of that. Speaking of barbecue sauce, that has nothing to do with the next thing I'm gonna talk about. But as a, as a horrible segue, <laughs> anyway, some sauce that exploding to, out of a volcano that you're gonna yeah, get. To. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that takes us to Raw in April 19th, and this is actually Monday Night SmackDown. You know, it's a very very unique episode of Raw because they the WWE were over in Europe doing that post WrestleMania tour that they do every year, except for 2020, obviously. Um, but you know, if you guys don't remember, like there's this uh, volcano. Yeah, I think it was in golly, where was it? Somewhere uh, exploded. Iceland uh, volcano. Iceland, yeah, yeah. Iceland volcano exploded, and all kind of travel issues for everyone, not just everybody, but for all of Europe and stuff. But anyway, long story short, is that the SmackDown crew was able to get out of Europe while Raw had to stay there. So 
the SmackDown crew plus Triple H, he was the only Raw guy that didn't even go overseas, apparently. So uh, they were able to make it back. This is the go-home show for Extreme Rules. So the, the week, you know, six days before, and it's all SmackDown guys on the show. So anyway. Yeah, my uh, cousins were Swagger's, actually in Europe at the time, and they were stuck over oh, there, like, for I remember that a now. few extra yeah. days or a week or something like that. It was... Uh, not quite a pandemic, but definitely a, a, a no. crazy time there for a few days for sure. a lot of people. You know, it affected like yeah, all they couldn't of Europe. See. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So, um, yeah, so Swagger is facing Orton at Extreme Rules, but of course Orton is over there in Europe. So he comes out and says he's going to show Randy Orton what he's going to do to him Sunday and issue an open challenge. So he's like, you know, usually when this happens, a monster comes through and destroys them. So, you know, I'm going to challenge anybody in the locker room. And nobody answers. So he goes, yeah, that's what I thought. And he goes to leave. And then all of a sudden we hear Taker's, you know, gong go off and his music hits. And Swagger is severely disappointed <laughs> that this is happening to him. Uh, but um, <laughs> as Taker comes out, Michael Cole, and I want to quote him here. He says, the biggest SmackDown and WWE superstar of all time, the legendary Undertaker. The biggest SmackDown and WWE superstar. So he got a little tongue tied there, but it's fine. It happens. But I don't know. Yeah, it's, it happens a lot more than Matt Stryker, but Cole, you know, he was off his game. But um, anyway, but this is the first, you know, Taker's first appearance since, you know, he tipped the cap to Sean, like you just said. So um, match is what it is. In my opinion, he, Swagger gets way too much offense, but it's because I can't stand the guy. But anyway, misses a Vader bomb, Taker choke slams him, tombstones him, and pins him. And I just wanted to put in my notes too, like Swagger, since he won the world title on the sec- February second or April second, he's lost almost every match he's been mm. in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he won one tag match on SmackDown, but every, other than that, he's, he's got pinned in every match he's been in since then. So it just doesn't. I don't know. Even when you're a heel, you got to have some wins, man. I just don't understand. So I mean, lose by DQ, lose by countout. Like I sure. get that it's the Undertaker. Not take a clean pinfall. Yeah, I mean, Undertaker should always beat Jack Swagger, but if he's the world champ, yes. may, protect him a little bit, man. Right, exactly. Especially going into a pay-per-view. You're yes. going into a pay-per-view this, that weekend. So, oh, Anyway, we'll just want to briefly touch the next week of Raw is the draft. So not a lot happening here. You know, Taker never gets drafted. Ever since the, he was the first nope. draft ever in 2002, but other than that, he never, never gets drafted. Again. But, you know, <laughs> SmackDown, we're basically talking about SmackDown. He, they're going to get Kelly Kelly, Big Show, which I – I don't even remember what show he's on, but anyway, we're getting Kofi, Christian, Chavo, Cody Rhodes, Chris Masters, Hornswoggle, Rosa Mendez, MVP. So I'm excited to go and have MVP, you know, on there and Christian and Cody Rhodes. That's pretty cool. So and other than that, yeah. they can have the rest. So and we'll know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about him actually. <laughs> well, uh, Undertaker too makes this episode of raising Kane. <laughs> Undertaker does make one more Raw appearance before going into hibernation. And uh, this is on May 17th, 2020. So he got called into action quite a bit over the summer. Uh, a lot more yeah. than normal. And uh, this is for a special commercial-free episode of Raw. It is live from Toronto, Canada. And, I mean, you go to Canada. What better guest host can you have than American astronaut hero Buzz Aldrin? <laughs> why is, Absolutely. Why is that the guy that you have in Canada? Nothing screams Toronto like Buzz Aldrin, baby. <laughs> I have no idea, man. What is the deal? Who is scheduling find, this? Mike man. Myers. Yeah. Any Canadian? They have. They love SNL. You have any SNL alumnus from Canada? God, so, Mike Myers would be Ted an Urban. amazing guest host for Monday would Night Raw. I want him to guest host yeah. next Monday. Today, <laughs> no man. Instead, we got the girl from the Bachelorette or Bachelor oh, on there. Stop, stop. Well, uh, <laughs> I had to look her up. I didn't know who she is. <laughs> uh, we've got Edge competing in a pick your poison match where Randy Orton gets to choose his opponent for the night, and Christian comes out to face oh, Edge. It was just like they had a bunch of like bottles of like arsenic and stuff like like sulfuric acid, and you just chose the one you're going to take. That's what it would be in 2020. It be like a cinematic thing like that with, with the fiend yeah. and Braun yeah. Strowman or something. Pick yeah. your poison. <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt. Get back to it. 
<laughs> well, uh, Edge is confused about this, um, and I, man, I, I, I don't remember, and I didn't watch enough to know what was going on. I couldn't tell if Edge was supposed to be a heel or a babyface during Dude. all of this. It was not clear to me. He was like a tweenager, man. He was all in between. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> tweenager. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> these guys have a good long match against each other. Lots of counters. Uh, a really fun match to go back and see. Might be the last time they ever faced each other. Uh, I'm not certain about that, but uh, definitely could be if you go back and look at the record books. But Edge gets the pin over Christian. And then, uh, I, I kind of like this, uh, Randy Orton appears on the Titan Tron. And he's like, yeah. man, congratulations, Edge. Great match, but I don't know why you just wrestled Christian. That's not the guy I picked to face you tonight. <laughs> and uh, Orton smiles, and the gong hits, and Undertaker makes his entrance. So, uh, it, Orton pulled a fast one. I don't know what happened. Christian just wanted a match. Uh, I don't know exactly <laughs> yeah. the details there, but uh, I'd be angry at my best friend if I were seriously if I was Edge. But, but dude, you just you weren't even supposed to be out here. <laughs> you, just, you just jumped the gun, you jacked my match. Twenty minute match with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Edge he uh, uses his brain here. He rolls out of the ring as Taker does his entrance and. Uh, when the bell rings, Edge rolls back outside and immediately gets counted out here. So Undertaker well, gets he's a on the apron. Away. He stands oh. on the apron and the ref counts him out, and it drove me crazy. He's on the apron and the ref is like one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. I'm like, no, that is not how you count someone out. Yeah, hit, dude, it drove me nuts, man. Yeah, I didn't think about it, but yeah, you're right. You're right. It was stupid. <laughs> well, it was all sorts of random because uh, as Taker wins, Edge is just kind of like smiling and doesn't care. And Christian pops back into frame and rolls Edge into the ring and Undertaker gives him a choke slam. So, again, <laughs> I thought Edge was a baby face, but he's right. totally playing off like a heel here. Undertaker <laughs> beats him up and... I, I just, I didn't get it, man. I didn't get the angle. I didn't get the storyline. I wasn't paying enough attention to it all. But it did make me think, is there anybody besides Undertaker who has ever had to get dressed up and put as much gear on as he has and go through all the motions to do so little? Like, he, he <laughs> did his entrance, got his gear on, had his makeup on, came out there to do one <laughs> choke slam. Two weeks ago or three weeks ago, he came out to do a tip of the cap to Shawn tip Michaels. <laughs> We've seen him so many other times. He just comes out and stands at the top of the stage and has to get his gloves yep. and his tape and his knee pads and his elbow pads on for 60 seconds worth of work. Man, no one else in history, <laughs> I don't think. Hey, that's a pretty good gig then. Pretty well, good gig. It is, and it shows his commitment to things, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, we started off the night with Buzz Aldrin, you know, Canada's hero, and also going to end the night with Canada's hero, too, you know, because this is that big title change where Bret Hart defeats the Miz. So that was pretty neat at the time. That was cool. I was was okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Got a soft spot for for the hit, man. I'm I'm fine with it. And who cares about Miz? He can beat up Miz. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Miz is like bulletproof man he can do he can have egg on his face all the time and he's fine so he's amazing everybody hates him so he won't um, get salmonella what brings us no no not at all not at all what brings us to smackdown may 28 2010 this is a smackdown after the first ever and i think only ever over the limit pay-per-view if i'm not mistaken no i think they do at least one more of those yeah oh okay Oh, because mm, maybe they, they do. do anyway, it in 2011. Yeah, it was, anyway, I'm it was sure. Yeah, it was short, short run. Well, um, not as short again, as this, this next is, one. Right, exactly. Well, you know, it's the night after pay or the the week after pay per view. So Teddy's got to come out and and you know, start pumping up the next one. You know, he comes out, telling us on SmackDown, you know, four weeks we're gonna have another brand new pay per view called Fatal Four Way, and this is gonna be you know the World Heavyweight Champion. Jack Swagger is going to defend his title in a fatal four-way, and due to his DQ victory over Jack Swagger at Over the Limit, the big show automatically qualifies. So, <laughs> there for me. 
And then the other two opponents will be decided tonight in qualifying matches. We're going to get CM Punk versus Kane and Rey Mysterio versus the returning of the phenom of the WWE, The Undertaker. The returning of the phenom of the WWE, The Undertaker. He's just so excited. Wait to get that. Yeah, he's so excited. But dude, you made a great note in your or in your notes here. It's like this. This has got to be a what a crack pay per view I did because they do three ways and four matches all the time. Why is this night any special? Like, what's the point? I there's, don't get it. There's a fatal four way on TV probably once every two weeks on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, like tag team singles, something like that. Why am I paying forty dollars to watch this? Yeah, like it's just a fatal four way. It's not special. It's not cool. Like in 1997, when we had the final four match with Taker and Vader yes. and Hart and Austin. And that was like that was the first time, like they weren't even yep. really doing triple threats at that time. But I was like, oh, a four Mm-mm. four singles guys in a match that was unique, that was special. Yes, you could sell a pay per view on that. Not in two thousand ten. There's no cage. No. There's no blood. No. There's no tables or ladders or chairs. It's just a four way. That's no. the whole pay per view. Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. So I don't know, man, but. uh Anyway, Punk defeats Kane after a go to sleep with some shenanigans, and this is where this is where Punk had started wearing his mask after I think he got his head shaved right after by um well, he lost to Ray I think it was yeah, yeah and got his head shaved so so good. and then um he got his little bald head under there and he's wearing that little like ridiculous mask but anyway the main event is Taker and Mysterio raise out first Taker's coming to SmackDown for the first time that since he's defeated Sean back at WrestleMania. And these two have another great TV match here, man. It's really good quality, main event quality match. Love it. Um, Taker gives Ray a lot of offense. And this is a, this is a match where Ray does a springboard senton, and he just butt drops Taker right on the face, just busts him right open. You can, you can watch it happen. And as soon as he sits on Taker's face, Taker just winces in pain and turns his head to the side. So Ray um, – you know, Taker's bleeding from the face at this point, and Taker catches him off the springboard, turns into a tombstone, and pins him clean. So Taker's supposed to be going to the World Heavyweight title match at Fatal 4-Way. Supposed to be, because things are going to change, because Ray dropped a diamond, dropped his butt on Taker's face. So, Yeah, like, a uh, so similar thing happened in their World Rumble match. Ray busted him open, and mm-hmm. busted his nose open in that one, and that's happened a number of times with Ray Mysterio, whether it's his knee braces yep. with Cody Rhodes, or a lot of yeah. opponents have felt the wrath <clears throat> of Ray Mysterio unintentionally. But yeah, it is going to instigate this big, giant storyline that is going to dominate the uh, the summer in SmackDown, and is going to... Uh, change a lot of things it's going to elevate kane it's going to take undertaker off tv it's going to change the whole course of everything here so uh as it turns mm-hmm. out uh undertaker did literally uh break his orbital bone from that spot for Maria mysterio and he is going to be out of action for the next few months and is that uh, going to be have to be taken out of that fatal four-way match uh he's not going to wear a phantom of the opera mask like he did <laughs> <Yeah>. in 1995 <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Teddy Long uh, opens the show with the sad news that over the Memorial Day weekend, The Undertaker was found by his brother Kane in a vegetative state. There is an ongoing investigation looking into who or what was responsible for this brutal, heinous attack quite the announcement coming out of nowhere on this episode of smackdown very bizarre very strange um yep don't know why it happened over the memorial day weekend don't know why kane <laughs> found he came over for the barbecue and <laughs> his brother's like, instruction her. schmidt's family barbecue <laughs> kane had the hot dogs and the kool-aid is like brother where are you? Like, i don't know man. i guess taker is supposed to bring the veggie tray so mm. If only, <laughs> if only he would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he he doesn't he doesn't like cucumbers, man. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> <Very> true. <laughs> 
So then we get the intro for SmackDown and head into the arena. And this is, you got to go back and watch this. This was yes. so over the top and theatrical. Uh, we hear the Latin chanting beginning and a group of druids slowly bring a casket out to the ring. You know, the lights are all dimmed and purple. And then Kane's pyro erupts. And Undertaker's baby brother makes his way out, and the entire arena goes from the purple light to Kane's red lighting. As Kane enters mm-hmm. the ring uh, to make, I believe, his second shirtless eulogy for The Undertaker. When we saw him <laughs> make one in 2004, <laughs> now he's going to do it again. Uh, all right, all right, time out. If I pass before you in real life, I want you to make a shirtless eulogy with this music playing and a black. Take a wreath. I give. Them, I'll get. I'll write it down, and and we'll get it notified. Same right, for no, me, bro. So. Same for All me. Right, you got it. You gotta wear an elbow you pad and a black glove, though. You know, <laughs> without question. A white contact in your eye. Sure. <laughs> and shave your head. I'll shave my head. Like Kane. I'll shave my head. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything for you, brother. All right, man. <laughs> well, if it's as if it's as well done as this, I'm I'm down for it, man. Yeah. Because seriously. This really did. It did not feel like a wrestling show for about 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. It felt like like a Broadway, like a big stage production or like Disney World or yeah. something where you're just immersed in this whole arena production. It is so big and over the time. It, it, it's literally more than anything we've ever seen before. Um, and they, they mm-hmm. really embrace it. There's like even – there's music behind – Kane's promo the entire time he talks and it's not just his theme music it's I I don't know Mm -hmm. if it was live in the arena or not or if it was post-production but it like it actually raises and lowers with the tone of his promo like as he as he keeps going like the music swells underneath him I've never seen anything like it it's like a musical score like to like like in a movie you know it's really really well done he's got the podium and and the black wreath next to him and he he goes over and asks for the coffin to be opened and lightning crashes in the arena as we see that the coffin is empty which we're going to see quite a bit of over the next few weeks as well and Kane delivers this long emotional speech saying in all likelihood the most feared dreaded respected force in the history of the WWE, The Undertaker, my brother, will no longer walk amongst us. Gone are the endless nights. When the Undertaker would strike fear into the hearts of those in his presence. Gone is the face of darkness, his brilliance extinguished by an act of cowardice. Gone is the specter was beloved and admired by millions of creatures around the world. Gone from the WWE is its most iconic figure. And gone forever And Kane, I just got to give props to him, man, because I'm going to say it throughout this podcast, but you know, he got, he probably got the script like an hour before they went on Mm -hmm. screen. Like this is not something he's had weeks to memorize or even days. Surely he probably got it this afternoon. And yep. Every single time over the next three months, he comes out and he delivers these 10 minute soliloquies and they are perfect. Man, he never stumbles. He never misses a beat. 
he he kills every one of them and I, I like the way you said earlier about it being like broadway like because even the camera shots they're like they're real tight on him it's not like a normal promo where it's out in the hard cam or you know, the side cams it's like up in his face it's got it's kind of swirling around it's just really really well done man and like you said he just knocks a homer every time he does man he he sucked me into this one here is mm-hmm. um he basically sets the stage for the next few months he vows vengeance as he plans to prosecute and persecute those who were responsible for the atrocity <laughs> of his brother. <laughs> I think he stumbled over his words right there. I don't know which one he was no, supposed he to say. recovered like that. <laughs> he did, yeah. though. And he starts screaming about vengeance. They will be vengeance. That's his other word he goes back to. Vegetative state yes. and vengeance. He keeps saying vengeance over and over and over again. And he slams the podium over and the microphone and does the Shakespeare pose in the middle of the ring, crawls toward the casket. He's crying, saying, I should have been there for you, yeah. brother. It is just an like a Emmy award winning performance right here, man. It's uh it, it's incredible. You gotta go watch it if you've never seen it. Yeah, and if you know the story there, it makes it if you just turn it on for one night, you're like, What is going on? But like if you know the story, you know the history, we've got thirteen years of, you know, equity built up in the storyline which is going to play out into the way this actually ends so i'm just saying like, it's so well done man yeah I really dug it man they're building up a mystery here like they're setting the stage for it, it all seems a little weird it seems a little suspicious uh and so you're kind of wondering still what is going on here so the mystery plays out all throughout this episode of smackdown uh teddy says there's going to be a fatal four-way match to replace undertaker or no, excuse me, there's going to be a battle royal to replace Undertaker in the right. Fatal 4-Way match at the pay-per-view. Um, CM Punk is backstage. He's adjusting his mask, getting ready, and Kane barges in and says, I can smell the stench of guilt on you, CM Punk. And Punk says him and the Strange Society had nothing to do with Undertaker. In fact, they would do anything to help out a fallen brother. And Kane says, brother, and then tosses Punk aside. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He keeps going on backstage. He's with Rey Mysterio, and he's like praying with Rey Mysterio. And uh, Kane's asking Rey Mysterio, he's interrogating Rey Mysterio, was it you? And Rey swears he wasn't involved. And Kane says, well, maybe you were, maybe you weren't, but I'm not assuming anyone's innocence tonight. Later on, Jack Swagger, he, uh, they're in Texas tonight, like University of Texas territory, and Swagger's wearing his Oklahoma Sooners jersey and starts doing a uh, Oklahoma fight song and maybe even got like a bouncing yeah. Swagger head with the lyrics on there. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, and Kane interrupts Swagger from behind and asks if it was you who attacked my brother. And Swagger... Just puts his head down. And then we cut to the ring for Rosa Mendez to come out dancing. It was very, very yeah. jarring. Very strange. I thought we were going to play like the Peanuts theme song or something. Like the, the not, the, not the theme song, but like, you know, the little <laughs> yeah. Good Grief song. Like, dun, 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 dun. That would have been great. But yeah, he just puts his head down and Kane just looks at him and he cut, the screen cuts off. It's like, what was the point of that? Uh, yeah. So stupid. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff with the storyline and then a lot of just like stuff where you're just scratching your head. Um, like this. Yes. We got Big Show and Hornswoggle playing cards backstage. Uh, <laughs> sort of a throwback to the uh, Last Ride episodes when we used to hear about the guys Undertaker <laughs> used to play cards with. And uh, Undertaker's not around anymore, so Show and Hornswoggle got to play cards with each other. Uh, Kane interrupts and he gets in Show's face and... Kane says that his brother has always had Big Show's number. There's nothing he could ever do about it. And Show says, I had nothing to do with this. If you accuse me, that would be a giant mistake. And Kane starts to cry and kicks the table over. So, all that to build up to this big battle royal uh, where Kane is in it to replace Undertaker in the Fatal 4-Way. And it comes down to the final four of Kane, Rey Mysterio... Luke Gallows and Kurt Hawkins. 
Yes, the big sir. final four of this battle royal <laughs> and his red leather pants here. Uh, Hawkins gets tossed pretty quickly by Mysterio, so Ray is left in the ring with Kane and fake Kane. And then the hooded stranger <laughs> of the Straight Edge Society, who ends up being Joey Mercury, he tries to interfere and help Luke Gallows. Gallows disposes of them both. Kane and Mysterio are the final two. Kane tries to choke slam Ray, but Ray reverses into a Hurricane Rana and flips Kane out of the match to win and enter the fatal four way. So, there you go. Ray Mysterio has replaced Undertaker after injuring Undertaker. Uh, yeah. Worked out pretty good for Ray. I don't know. Kind of suspicious. <laughs> The reward of your breaking his face is you get to be, take his place in the match. So. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> uh, it's nuts. <clears throat> yeah. Well, three nights later, I guess, on Raw, this is nothing to do with Taker, but I love this episode of Raw. I love the ending. This is the night that NXT rookies destroy everything. Punk vs. Cena. Uh, just one of the most iconic, Huge. memorable yeah. endings. Uh, it's been 10 years, and I remember like it was yesterday. I remember watching this at my... Let's see, we had just bought our house a month before this. Uh, just remember watching this in, in our house and just like, what is going on, man? Like, it's just so cool. Uh, anytime I get to see Justin Roberts choked out with Ty, it's great, too. <laughs> 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 no. But anyway, just just memorable, you know. Um, Unfortunately, well, anyway, they had so, no idea what to do after that. It was a great angle, a great storyline, a great moment. And sadly, that was the peak of it. They just didn't have a plan yeah. after that. Yeah. So, um, well, SmackDown, uh, a couple nights later, this is June 11th, 2010. I wrote 20 in my notes for some reason. Anyway, the Fatal 4-Way opponents uh, come out there, and they're uh, Rey Mysterio starting the show with a promo. Does he say what it do, Tampa? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What it do, Tampa? I didn't know it was a thing back in What it do, Tampa? What it do? <laughs> Dang. They were just planning to see it for WrestleMania Dang. for 2020. So, <laughs> yeah, well, um, they're discussing the match. And then, you know, it's Ray's talking about winning and then seeing Punk and Straight Edge Society come out. Jack Swagger. And it's just all those guys coming out. And I'm trying to just connect some of this stuff because oh, yeah. it's going to get kind of tedious. But anyway, uh, Kane's face appears on the Tron and the lights turn red and he wonders who's responsible for Taker's demise, and so when I find this responsible party, I'm going to end up, or I said they're going to end up in this. And the camera pans away to show a casket and some candles. And this is backstage. It's got some, you know, uh, candles around there, and it's got like the purple and the red light back there. And Kane, uh, he's like, I'm going to accuse any of you because not, you know, it could have been more than one person, you know, but I promise vengeance. And he knocks the casket over. So. We're going to see this casket and these candles a lot in the next few weeks and months. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, Ray defeats Swagger, and then Kane comes out and lays both of them out with choke slams. Uh, backstage, we get that or- organ music. I think it's the same music that was playing during that promo you just discussed. Uh, uh, was playing as kind of that really theatrical score. Uh, Kane's. Uh, he throws black flowers in the casket that he was with earlier, and he's he's talking to the casket like t- like it is Undertaker. And he's like, I mean, "I'm so sorry, and you know, I've, I've I've felt you carrying me on the stairway to success, and you know, but now I don't feel you in my soul. My soul is empty, and you know that the men that took you out are going to be ready for hell. You know, he's really, really putting it on there, so laying it on thick. And the main event <laughs> of this night is uh, Big Show versus CM Punk. And show wins by DQ when the entire SES interferes. The hooded figure, which I b- believe will become Joseph Mercury, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yep. Isn't that Joe? Yeah, they call him Joseph, though, don't they? Or Joe? Someone, they don't call him Joey at first, I think. But anyway, they lay a beat down on the big show, and then Kane's pyro hits, and his music hits, and he comes out and makes a beeline for the ring, and choke slams Joey Mercury, choke slams Luke Gallows, Punk bails out of the ring, and then Kane turns attention to Big Show and choke slams him as well. So he is just going nuts, taking out everybody. Everybody's a suspect to Kane. So we get to the bottom of it. Yeah, he's not in this fatal four way match, but he's sort of at the center of it in a lot of ways here. Yeah. And uh, the go home show for this fatal four way pay per view is June eighteenth, and CM Punk opens the show. Uh, he's cutting this promo saying he. 
the only thing better than him winning on Sunday would be if Undertaker were there for him to see it. He brags about being the only guy to make Undertaker tap out, and if he wasn't in a vegetative state, he'd make him tap out again. Which brings me to why I'm out here. I want to actually talk about the Undertaker's vegetative state. So I know you, a lot of you are familiar with vegetative state looking at you right now. But just as I am not responsible for the vegetation I see before me, myself, nor any member of my straight-edge society are responsible for the Undertaker's current vegetative state. <laughs> you know, he's tying all that into his straight-edge stuff, all this sort of stuff. And then, suddenly, the lights flicker and they go out. And then the Undertaker appears in the ring and the crowd's going nuts and Punk is starting to freak out. The announcers are like, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's The Undertaker. But yeah. The Undertaker just stands there motionless. And the entire time, the camera conveniently stays right behind him. It never turns around. Mm-hmm. It never tries to shoot him from the front. So it's very awkward. And Punk takes his time. He slowly walks towards Undertaker. He touches him lightly, kind of shoves him a little bit. And then he knocks Undertaker's hat off to reveal... It's Luke Gallows disguised as the yeah. Undertaker. So after being the fake Kane, now he gets to be the fake yes. Undertaker. It's perfect. Probably the only man in history to but done both of those, except for Kane and Taker. <laughs> right. Each other, you know. He's the third guy. He's the third man. <laughs> yeah. Well, they start laughing and they stomp on the Undertaker hat and yada, yada, yada. Kane interrupts their party. But the whole Strange Society attacks him, and then Jack Swagger comes out and helps out the Strange Society and gives Kane three Swagger bombs in a row. Uh, mm-hmm. Big Show and Rey Mysterio run in and make the save for Kane, which I thought was kind of weird. Uh, but then they just beat up the Strange Society and get them out of the ring, and then they end up beating up Kane as well. So I was like, okay, yeah. I guess that makes sense now. Yep. I was with you. I was saying, I was like, what are they doing? And then they wound up, yeah, hitting a 619 and stuff on Kane. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Show gives Kane a choke slam and then gets down in his face and starts yelling at him to make sure the cameras can hear him. <laughs> I was not responsible for what happened to The Undertaker. And I'm going to win the world <laughs> title on Sunday. <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> Uh, and then the main event is Mysterio and Big Show defeating CM Punk and Jack Swagger uh, when Ray again pins Jack Swagger clean. He's done that a bunch <laughs> lately. Uh, and then Kane again makes his presence felt, attacks everybody, uh, gets on the mic and says, One of you is already in hell and doesn't even know it. This Sunday will be a fatal night for the guilty party. Uh, he gets on one sta- uh, one knee, uh, does the Shakespeare pose, motions toward the stage, and that empty casket is already up on the stage. There are flames erupting all around it. So lots more production going into this. Um, and then I'll just note real quickly the Fatal 4-Way pay-per-view itself. Fatal 4-Way, so... It's Swagger, it's Mysterio, it's Big Show, and it's Punk. And Kane, of course, after all this, he's going to interrupt the match. He rolls out the symbolic casket, as Michael Cole calls it. I don't know what else it would be besides symbolic. (laughs) Yeah. And Kane decides to go after CM Punk, specifically. So Kane tosses him out of the ring, chokeslams him into the casket... And then Luke Gallo saves the day and gets Punk the heck out of Dodge as Kane chases them to the back. So apparently Kane suspects CM Punk to be the man who put Undertaker in his vegetative state. And that allows Rey Mysterio to go on to win the match and score his second ever world title. So more pieces being put into motion for the next few weeks. Again, this guy wasn't even going to be in this match. He wasn't going to be in this match, but he broke Taker's face and Worked that he won the world title. Yeah. So pretty good consolation, Brian. I'd say so. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
after that, this is the next SmackDown. This is June 25th. Um, the first SmackDown after pay-per-view. So you know what that means. Teddy's here to hype a new pay-per-view idea. <laughs> this time it's, it's three in a row, in man. The bank. <laughs> yeah, baby. He loves it. So we're getting the money in the bank, which, again, we had that match at WrestleMania because Jack Swagger won it and uh, cashed in a couple days later. But this is an actual money in the bank pay-per-view, first one of its kind, still going strong in 2020. You know, we have one every year. Um, they've since expanded it to cinematic matches and, you know, women's <laughs> matches and whatnot. But, you know, still got it going on. So he said Ray's going to defend his new world title that night. And Teddy and Vicky are going to evaluate eight wrestlers to compete for the SmackDown Money in the Bank match. So, again, we're talking about this because Kane's going to wind up being in that. So, anyway, backstage, Kane's talking to an open casket. Again, he says he's going to get revenge and take out CM Punk tonight. And he- Which, again, decapitate the head is just redundant, in my opinion. So <laughs> it's the only thing just, you can decapitate. It's like when, yeah, it's like when someone says, I fell down. I'm like, yeah, you could have just stopped with I fell. Like, you <laughs> only could fall down. So I don't, there's no need to say Touché. I fell down. You just say I fell. Yeah. Touché. Decapitate the head. So anyway, well, we get our first <laughs> vignette for Alberto Del Rio this night. So he's going to never face Taker on pay-per-view, is he? Nope. No, but, um, I don't think on TV ever either. I probably never ever. So maybe take just had, he's like he could just tell this guy's this guy's got something <laughs> wrong. I don't want to tarnish my legacy with this guy. But um, anyway, main event is Kane versus Punk, and uh, they it's a no DQ match because it needs to be to get the story where it's supposed to hit. Exactly. <laughs> That's the <whole> yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. It basically just sets up the straight edge society coming in. They're all getting involved. Kane choke slams Joey Mercury on the outside. He choke slams the gallow through an announce table. Punk escapes to the crowd. They make it up to like the, what do you call that? Like the vestibule or whatever. Like what's the thing? Yes. That's a good the walkway, That's it. Yeah. The atrium. The concession atrium, stand, you know, merch the stand. Concessions there. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he and Punk, you know, fight, brawl out there. Almost like, it reminded me of, you know, 1999 era when they used to brawl yeah. back there all the time. But he throws Punk through another table that was actually holding the popcorn and the cotton candy. So, <laughs> throwing some good <laughs> treats there. And then he just shoves Punk through the door to the outside of the arena. And Punk just runs across the street to end the show. He just leaves. <laughs> so, That's it. In his mask. Like a gag mask in his underwear. He's running Can you imagine the driving street. down the street? <laughs> you just see this guy in boots, underwear, and a mask just like running away. <laughs> yeah, 2020 would be normal. 2010 it was like, what the freak? <laughs> the mask. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no finish though. He just no, leaves. <laughs> he just, no, he's gone. no finish and no DQ match. <laughs> oh, Punk was awesome, man. Uh, he was great. <laughs> well, apparently, so underutilized here at this t- point. Apparently, we have another um, unexpected injury here as Kane has injured Punk during this match. Uh, they're backstage on the next week of SmackDown, and Punk's got his arm in a sling. <laughs> And Serena tries to tell Punk, look, we've got to stop this. Kane is not going to stop. We need to just admit it, and this will all be over. And Punk says, we'll take care of things. It doesn't matter. It's fine. And Serena's like, no, you were in surgery for 10 hours this past week. Okay. <laughs> As someone who worked in a hospital, Travis, tell me about a 10-hour surgery. surgery. Yeah. I worked in surgery for two years. The only 10-hour surgeries I ever saw were, like, brain and spinal <laughs> surgeries. Like, we, we never did a 10-hour elbow, tennis elbow surgery or anything. Like, that is <laughs> – you could tell someone completely out of touch with the medical field wrote this promo because 10 oh, no hours doubt. for anything in your arm. I mean, unless – I don't even know. I can't even think of anything. Unless well, it was just, like, in little – 
bone pieces. You have to glue it back together and put it together like a jigsaw puzzle. That's the only reason you could make it a 10 hour surgery. You know what? He's a crybaby heel. So it's, it's fine. He can say, he can say that sort of stuff. Yeah. And we can like laugh yeah, at yeah, it. I guess no, so. you weren't. You, you're ridiculous. So, um, Later on in the night, Kane is going to face his formal do- former doppelganger, Luke Gallows, here, the Battle of the Canes, and yeah. Punk and Mercury come in and try to attack Kane, but Serena comes out and stops the assault, and she gets on the mic and says, Punk could not have been the one to attack The Undertaker on Memorial Day weekend, and she knows because Punk was with her, Punk was saving her. And Punk is yelling at her, like begging her to stop, to not do this, to not show this. But Serena gives us some security camera footage. And we see footage from a bar where Serena walks in and she's having a few drinks with a handsome stranger. I didn't recognize him, but Travis, who was it? Adam Cole, baby. Really? Absolutely. Oh, man. That's Adam Cole. And I remember... uh, I remember it being him. I remember seeing it on like a uh, one of those, you know, NXT superstar debuts, like where they showed like Champa and Gargano from. Like they showed this on one of those things too. He's like, yeah, I was at the bar, and he's like severely underage at the time. I mean, it's obviously not real beer, but uh, he's well, well, he's thirty one years old now, so I guess he would have been, been twenty one then. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, no, his birthday is July fifth. This was July second, so no, he was twenty. <laughs> so. Yeah, and this was on Memorial Day, you know. <laughs> oh yeah even earlier than that yeah so yeah he's he had a fake anyway, yeah, yeah adam cole adam <laughs> cole sitting there future longest reigning nxt champion future pat mcafee opponent so there you go well we see the security cam footage and uh serena ends up having some shots having drinks with this guy all night long and then punk and gallows storm into the bar and and joey mercury as well and they just give her a hard time and all this sort of stuff drag her out of the bar uh goes on for a real long time and then kane this whole time he's got a goozle on cm punk while they're watching the video yeah. and kane finally lets go of his grip on punk and he walks away because clearly punk could not have been the guy to do it we see the video he's got a time stamp on it and all that sort of stuff and uh but punk is upset about this serena has blown up the straight edge society has blown up their entire gimmick by embarrassing herself and all this sort of stuff and serena tries to apologize but punk walks away and leaves her behind and uh i think that was kind of based on like a real life thing because she ends up leaving the company pretty shortly after mm-hmm. that is that not am i misremembering that is that true yeah yeah i think she like legit did some had some kind of substance issues and then got released because of it and stuff. So, I think her and Punk were dating at the time too. Like that was one of his things too. It's oh. like don't like you know. I didn't know that. Anyway, yeah. he dated half the roster. Yeah, so, true. Female <laughs> roster. So. The next week, SmackDown, uh, July 9th, thousand ten. Is so we're gonna get Jack Swagger and Big Show in the main event. <laughs> Double count out. Uh, Kane grabs Swagger by the throat and yells at him. <laughs> He just ambushes him backstage, and he puts him in a chair under a red light, which I just loved it. Like he just <laughs> he puts him in a chair, and the red light just comes on, and it reminded me of like Austin and RVD, but it's not even half as cool as that. But yeah, anyway, right. Kane's yelling at, he's like, "It was you all along. I know it was you." And he's like, "You know, I proved it last few weeks. You've been and he says, I proved it last few weeks where you've been making people suffer because the last few weeks Swagger has been like ankle locking people and taking them out and." Not putting them in vegetative states, but he's been, you know, <laughs> knocking them out and just kind of manhandling them. So Kane's like, you're a liar and I'll make you pay. And and Swagger's like, wait, 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 I have an alibi and I'll prove it to you next week. And so Kane's like, if I'm not convinced, then you're going to suffer in hell. So I don't know why Swagger has to give a week, but we'll come to find out the next week. So the next week, uh, July 16th, this is the go-home show for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which uh, I believe Kane has – we forgot to cover that, but he actually did uh, qualify for that. I missed that. Or did he have a match? It? I can't remember. I have no yeah. idea. I, don't, I was I going just, back trying to figure it out. It. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find it anywhere. But anyway, so the opening match is Kofi versus Dash and Cody Rhodes, and it's interrupted by Kane's pyro music. Uh, he comes out and chokeslams Kofi, chokeslams Cody, 
and then he grabs a mic and he's has some breaking news is there will be a bludgeoning tonight. So any you All know right. Vince McMahon loves that one. When you get the Bludgeon Brothers a few years later, like you know it's a Vince word. No one says bludgeon. For sure. But he says, You see, I know Jack Swagger, and Jack Swagger's a liar. He will pay for his sins and I will enjoy extracting my vengeance when I pronounce judgment on the condemned. Boom, Pyro, Kane, out. So that's just He's, yeah, he's all over these episodes. But later on, Swagger's on the phone, like, throughout the night, saying he's expecting somebody to get there. I want to put this thing with Kane behind me. Later on, he's on the phone again. He's frustrated because this person is late. I need the evidence. you got to get her now. Later on, uh, somebody else, or Limo, pulls up, and some guy gets out, and Jack Swagger hugs him. And gives him an envelope, and this production jabroni takes it to the truck to roll a beautiful bean footage, basically. And you wrote in your notes that this is a former bunkhouse buck in WCW. WCW star, man. I didn't recognize yeah. Adam Cole. You didn't recognize bunkhouse buck. <laughs> I didn't, no. I did not recognize bunkhouse buck. I'm disappointed myself, so yeah. So, well, he wasn't uh, in his traditional outfit. Wasn't in his suspenders right. and white yeah, <laughs> nasty shirt and jeans. I love me some bunkhouse yeah. buck, man. Bunkhouse oh, yeah. buck and Arn Anderson, Colonel Parker. He was well dressed here. He was, he was, and he uh, <laughs> he did not earn himself a job on this night, man. He was awful. No, he was awful. No. He's awful. So he's he's posing as Mister Swagger. He's Jack's dad, you know. Um, and so when they come out to the ring, actually, it literally says. Mr. Swagger, but Matt Stryker clearly can't read because he's like, who could this man possibly be? Who is this gentleman with Jack Swagger? Is he a lawyer? Could he be a police? I mean, we don't know. Well, Jack Swagger looks like a detective. Come on, Matt. Just Seriously. And you, read. They, Watch the screen. If you know, yeah. If you know the, the, anything about the commentary, they are looking at the screen. They're seeing the same thing we're seeing at home. They don't look into the they don't look at the live action and call it. They call what's on their screen or are supposed to because, you know, they don't want to give away anything that they're seeing and we're not seeing. So he's literally looking at the same screen we are and can't read apparently. But anyway, we get some evidence of why, you know, he couldn't been the one. And I don't – it's all hokey. And it, that that weekend, Memorial Day, they had some activities that included fishing, a relay race, a chicken wing eating contest. <laughs> uh, they were so busy they had no – time to beat up the undertaker so that's just so dumb but kane's pyro hits his music interrupts he comes out he's like i don't believe it and blah 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 jack swagger winds up locking on an ankle lock to him and ray makes a save which uh, i love this it comes with no music he just runs out no right. music plays i love that though so it's good so it comes out it's a 619 on swagger and then he leaves and Kane Goozle's dad and Jack and uh, Jack Swagger escapes. And Kane's got his dad Goozled in the middle of the ring. And Jack just kind of turns his back slowly. And Papa Swagger eats a tombstone. So <laughs> Jack Swagger has so spotless he can't even, you know, watch his own dad. Oh, yeah. Get tombstone. So. He turns his back on him. So. Yep. That's the next target of Kane's attacks here, but he's not going to be the last one either because Swagger has an alibi. Who else could it be that attacked The Undertaker? Well, that gets us to Money in the Bank. Uh, a couple days after that, July 18th, 2010, yep. the very first ever Money in the Bank pay-per-view, as you mentioned on there. And uh, Kane ends up winning that opening Money in the Bank Ladder match defeating Big Show, Christian, Cody Rhodes, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Kofi Kingston, and Matt Hardy. Uh, bunch of Hall of Famers right there. Man. Every, every one of those guys still in an active company, except Christian, I mean, he is because he can't wrestle. But yeah, every one of those guys 10 years later is either in AEW or WWE. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Legends. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was a big surprise. I don't think anyone really. I mean, I. I would say I was not following SmackDown super closely at the time. Maybe if I were, right. maybe I would see that coming a lot more. But I definitely thought, because that's what Money in the Bank had been. It had been kind of a jumping off point for a lot of guys. So it felt like maybe Dolph, maybe Drew McIntyre were probably mm -hmm. the top two guys. 
uh, that would yep. win this one. So it was kind of surprising and honestly a little disappointing uh, to see Kane win that one. But later on the night, Ray is going to defend the world title against Jack Swagger. Uh, they end up doing sort of the same finish of Eddie yeah. and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 20, where Ray slips his boot off with the ankle lock. So makes a lot of sense. Same finisher. So it uh, made a lot of sense to yep. do that, to tie that in. It was kind of cool. Immediately afterward, Kane comes out to cash in the money in the bank on Ray. So this had never been done before at no. this time. The money in the bank had never been cashed in on the same night. Uh, this night they got two men's money in the bank world titles. They're trying to get this money in the bank concept even more over. So it makes a lot of sense to try to cash it in on this same night uh, to you know really get this pay-per-view up off the ground and Kane hits a choke slam and a tombstone and successfully cashes in the money in the bank uh, to win what is only his second ever world title because we're not going to count the ECW title. So it's the first time since 1998 (laughs) where he only held the title for 24 hours, which is kind of insane considering what a huge part of the company Kane had been up to that point. Yeah, that's true, man. It's weird to think about 12 years in between. And yeah, he'd only held that title for a day. So that had been like, I mean, Taker held it the first time for what, six days? And that had been like, imagine if he didn't win it again till 2003. Right. And this is it you know, for Kane. I mean, this crazy. Would be the last time Kane holds it, too. He never holds it again yeah. after this. Nope. No, but he makes a good run for, of it here. So, well, this takes us to SmackDown, uh, July twenty third. You know, the week, the, the Friday after. So, Kane's going to open up the show, and uh, Matt Stryker talks about how Kane's been on an emotional ten year journey to reclaim the world title, and says that many in the universe feel WWE universe feel like that they've been along with Kane for that emotional journey. So. I don't know why he's saying this. Uh, as you point out in your notes here too, like I thought I didn't write it down, but I thought too, like why? Why would he do that? Like this Matt Striker is supposed to be a heel, and why would you even put any sympathy on this guy? Like I don't. I feel like he's got an identity crisis, man. So he which, does. Of course, I don't know. Maybe because on Raw, Cole is doing the heel stuff with Daniel Bryan. He's only heel when Daniel Bryan's up, but he's starting to edge more and more toward the heel stuff with the. Uh, the uh, general manager, the little like the uh, anonymous Email. general manager yeah, stuff. So yeah. maybe Strikers having the same thing as that on SmackDown here. I don't know, man, but it's dumb. very strange time for commentary right now. Yeah, it's not just Matt yeah. Striker with all his insufferableness. Michael Cole, like you said, has turned heel off of NXT, so. He's the lead announcer, but he's a heel. But sometimes he's still a babyface. And then Jerry Lawler is always a babyface. But it, I mean, it's just a very, yeah, very bizarre t- yeah. time for the next couple years on commentary. Absolutely. Well, Kane's going to come out and tell a story about how he used to hold up his goldfish. As a child, I take my goldfish, pinch its tail and hold it high above its bowl. I'd watch as it withered in pain, gasping for air, slowly dying. That's how I felt for the past 13 years until last Sunday night. This was epic, man. And again, if if you... uh, if you follow the story and put me back in like 97, I'm like, you know, well, actually put me back in that, that book you bought in that comic book. Uh-huh. Like, I never saw the scene <laughs> of the goldfish like being held up. So I wonder if he had a pet goldfish in the like mortuary or what, man. I don't know. But anyway, but this promo is great, man. I love it because it's got that music playing behind it again. And he's talking about holding up his childhood goldfish, watching it suffocate and gasp for air. And, um, you know, he recalls what happened at Money in the Bank. You know, we see clips of uh, him and Taker at the bro- as the brothers of destruction. And, you know, he says, you know, I compare that, you know, this fish gasping for air and suffocating to how I've felt over the past 13 years until I became world champion at Money in the Bank. He talks about how he defeated Ray and did what anyone would have done. He screams, I did it, I did it, I did it. And um, 
he says, you know, I did it all for my brother. I took the world title back, you know, to my brother. He says he took it to Taker's bedside. Uh, he, when he took it there, he, Taker just laid there. He couldn't celebrate with him. So he couldn't celebrate with him, but Kane vowed that no one will take the title from him. You know, no, He's going to keep it around his waist. No one's going to take it. Uh, and, and no one's going to rest until he gets vengeance on Taker's assailant. He screams a lot keeps screaming about vengeance for whoever you know did this to take her and then the pyro hits and it's over and it was just another great promo like you mentioned a few weeks ago when this whole storyline started he just he's nailing it man he's he's not gonna home run every time and again because it's kane he can tell a story about holding a goldfish up and it's not like exactly you know he sells it yeah it's good stuff well then later on, the main event is going to be Jack Swagger versus Rey Mysterio in a two out of three falls match to determine the number one contender for Kane at the SummerSlam. So Ray wins the first fall, Swagger wins the second, by, and then Ray gets a crucifix pin real quickly on Swagger to become a number one contender. Um, and then Swagger attacks, but Kane comes down to make the save here. He chokeslams Swagger. He helps Ray up in the corner, raises his hand for applause. Then Kane attacks and goes for a choke slam, but Ray reverses it and hits a six one nine. And Kane is kind of left in shock in the ring there. So, um, dude, this is like the forty eighth Ray versus Jack Swagger match we've got recently. <laughs> Every week. and dude, if you read SmackDown, like who is it? Ziggler and Kofi face almost oh every week, God. and Matt Hardy and Drew McIntyre face almost every week. I mean, seriously, like that's not an exaggeration. It's yeah. almost every week. It's crazy. I thought, I thought current day was bad with guys facing each other every week, but it was just as bad in 2010. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, we got a new, uh, new, um, you know, challenger for Kane, and it's going it. to be, you know, Ray. Ray's going to be the guy that he targets here on April, or excuse, not April, July 30th, 2010. <laughs> uh, Kane's going to open the show. Another theatrical promo. He starts the show already in the ring, the red light bathing him, yeah. the music playing behind him, the empty casket in the ring. And Kane says for 60 days, he's been at Undertaker's bedside waiting for a sign, waiting for him to point in the direction of whomever put him in this vegetative state. And Kane says yesterday, the unthinkable happened. He moved and the music swells behind him as he <laughs> says this. And the crowd cheers as Kane says Undertaker opened his eyes and he spoke for the first time in in two months. His voice was weak and frail and he could only utter two words. But what my brother said will be forever ingrained in my psyche because those two words was the name of his assailant. I heard my brother name the perpetrator of his demise. A tidal wave of anger and pain coursed through my body and consumed my entire being. I couldn't believe what I had heard. This entire time, the guilty party has been staring me in the eyes, but I've been too blind to see it. The man who attacked my brother is Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. So then we get this special effect of Undertaker's voice echoing throughout the arena saying, yeah. Ray <laughs> Mysterio. And again, it's all very theatrical, very cinematic here. As Kane stands up and he moves to the casket and says, uh, he and Undertaker stared at each other before I, uh, Undertaker closed his eyes and drifted back into unconsciousness. But those words, Rey Mysterio, lingered in the air and hung in his head. And Kane wondered how Rey could have done this. But the more he thought about it, the more it made sense. And Kane says it all goes back to that night. Undertaker beat Ray to earn a spot in the Fatal 4-Way match. And we see some footage of that match play. And Kane says after that match, Ray made a conscious decision and took the coward's way out. 
and the next week, like a virus invading its host, Ray won a battle royal and invaded his way into the fatal four-way match. And two weeks later, he emerged victorious and won the world title when he should have been hanging his head in shame. And the only Ray, way Ray would have could have won was because he took The Undertaker out. But Kane stopped him and took the world title back. And at SummerSlam, he'll beat him again. But this time, beating Ray will not be enough, and I'll have to stuff Ray inside of a casket. And we even get a casket cam as Kane opens up the Ooh, casket yeah. and looks inside of it. And Kane says he will damn Ray to eternal pain as he screams in eternal agony. And Ray will pray that night, but not to God Almighty, but he will pray to Kane. And then he will shut the lid, and Ray Mysterio will cease to exist, and the lights will dim, and his fate will be sealed, and his life will be sealed as his life oozes out of his pores. And Kane says the last thought that will run through his mind will be to repent for what he did to his brother, and the only thing left will be the darkness as Kane slams the casket. And I just got to get it up again to Kane, man. Like, just think, like, you know he did not get this promo more than, like, an hour or two before he went out there. And he just absolutely kills it. He does, man. He does a great job. It's, it's, uh, they're long promos, but he carries them well. He's doing a good job. It's, you know, especially for us when we're watching, like, five or six of these shows back to back trying to get ready for this stuff. It's a lot to go through. So I, I know that colors are opinions a lot of the times, but, and I know there's a lot of people that great may, not, stuff. may not be Kane fans, may not like it, may think it drags on and on, but I just, I'm giving kudos to him as a performer, as an actor. Mm-hmm. I just know how hard that is. And to me, this stuff was very Russo-esque in the best way. Because yeah. it just felt like there were so many different pieces playing into it. And it was cool because you know this was not the plan. Like this all came about because of Undertaker being right. injured. So they had to change a lot of the stuff on the fly. Yep. But they turned it into this long overarching storyline with all these different pieces and all these different players. And I was just really impressed watching it back. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny to me too as we continue to build this story – is that Bruce Pritchard is gone, and the Taker Kane storyline is is one of his, uh, you know, creations. You know, he talks about that, and see, he had a hand in all that stuff. Well, he's gone, but they're going to bring a lot of that old stuff back. And then Russo's gone, like you said. This is very Russo esque with the layers and the history and just a lot of stuff like that. It's just but both those guys that were main players in the initial Taker Kane storyline are both gone. Yet it still holds up to me as like. It could have been, you could supplant this right back in 97, 98, 99, and it still would have worked, you know? Well, that's so cool. You couldn't do this with anybody else because no, you're having The Undertaker be the focal point of your TV show for almost three months, and he never appears. What other right. guy can you do that with? I'm, I don't think anybody. I don't yep. think you could do that with John Cena. I don't think you could do that with The Rock. I don't think you could do that with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't think it works with anybody but The Undertaker. So that's what's cool, so cool nope. about this. Um, later on, real quick, Rey Mysterio faces Jack Swagger for the 17th time <laughs> in a row in the main event. <laughs> this time it's no DQ, though. And uh, this was actually pretty fun oh. because they go to the outside. They beat up each other all the way out of the building. And they're... Whatever town that it's in, they've done this a few times where the, the arena is right up on the Gulf of Mexico. So they go mm. across the street and uh, Ray tosses Swagger into the water and Swagger's screaming that he can't swim. He's drowning and Ray just leaves him to die. <laughs> but then Kane <laughs> pops up out of nowhere and choke slams Ray into the water to end the show. <laughs> yes, exactly. And at what point has the water at the beach ever been that significantly that deep right off the edge like that <laughs> you can't swim <laughs> it's like it's right tapering there. off though <laughs> of the sand but anyway that's going to take us to august 6th we're finally in august we've only got two more months to go we're doing it man <laughs> well ray opens the we're sh- ray opens the show and says you know he did not attack the undertaker he says god knows who attacked taker and so does he he's going to really be bringing his um 
his faith into the storyline yeah. coming up here a lot soon. It was cool. And his prayer and his, his being a man of God and stuff. So, well, Drew interrupts Drew McIntyre and uh, leading to the main event tonight. So I'm not going to hit all the highlights of that. But basically, he's saying that um, Kane's been delusional and now he's threatened to put me in a casket and I don't like caskets and only God can judge me. You can't judge me. Basically, is what he's saying to Kane. So, right again, Drew comes out, interrupts for his promo, and. Uh, says you know people like rare criminals been pulled the wool over people's eyes for years but now at the expense of taker your truth's finally come out uh, you know you just stood by while cm punk was falsely accused and got injured you know why would you stand by while jack swagger was accused and his father was hospitalized you know and it's you know uh, ray says this is not your business drew and uh anyway like i said it leads to a one-on-one match later on tonight so later on backstage oh, whoa, we see kane with the I candles gotta- I gotta say something here, Drew. When he challenges Ray to a match tonight, he said he's gonna do the same thing to Ray tonight that he did to the Undertaker in his own back garden tonight. My idea was to do the exact same thing to you in your own back garden here tonight. And he's trying to say his own backyard because they're in like San Jose or mm, something like that. Yes. But Drew yeah. McIntyre says, "I'm gonna beat you up in your own back garden tonight." And I rewound it mm. like three times, and that's definitely what he says. So that cracks me up. And this is a tape show, and they could have yeah. gone back and refilmed that, but they did not. So they chose to let it stay in the back garden. So, yeah, that should be a shirt. <laughs> so, back garden. That's great, man. I didn't Maybe even catch that's the that, phrase so. in Scotland. I, didn't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, they, yeah. Maybe they call the backyard the back garden. Yeah. So, maybe who so. knows? We might be the fools here. Maybe. So, again, Kane is, uh, you know, hermiting up in his little creepy room of the candles and the gasket, and he says he can smell Ray's fear, and he saw it in Ray's eyes when he chokeslammed him to the Gulf of Mexico, which, again, a sentence that anybody else in the roster utters, and you're like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. But because it's Kane saying it, it's fine. He says the casket will be Ray's final resting place and promises the darkness was going to consume him forever. So... And at this point, I'm thinking, oh, man, we're building to a casket match at the SummerSlam. You know? Huh. No, we're just yep. going to use that a lot, you know? So, Ray versus Drew's the main event. Uh, and Ray says beforehand he's going to, you know, he's allegedly going to announce who attacked Taker. He knows who it was. So, he winds up winning with a head scissors to a roll up. And before he can reveal the attacker, Kane comes out with the casket, pushes it down to ringside. Drew attacks Ray, then he just dips out of there and. Ray's cornered by Kane and slips out of the ring and into the casket briefly, and he runs up the ramp and he grabs a mic. And he says, It wasn't me who took out The Undertaker. It was you, Kane! It was you! Kane kind of smirks at first and begins to shake his head like, no, like, you know, gritting his teeth and uh, no, Shane said, no, no, no. And then he kind of falls on his knees and he's screaming, no, like through his teeth gritted. And he's having like a mental breakdown in the ring while he's kind of staring up at the ceiling here. So he uh, says, I love my brother over and over again. And he's not admitting that it was him that did it. He's not, you know, I mean, I guess he's admitting it was and he's saying no. But like you could tell he's having issues in his brain about, you know, those accusations. So. Yeah, it's all coming to fruition here as we hit the SmackDown Go Home show, August 13th, 2010. And uh, SmackDown's coming a little early in August this year. But uh, Dolph Ziggler, he opens the show up. Um, He's bragging because he just won the Intercontinental title. And he's going to go to Tahiti with Vicky Guerrero to celebrate. Kofi Kingston runs out to attack him. Teddy Long comes out. Says he's going to punish Dolph by making him defend his title at SummerSlam. He's going to face Rey Mysterio in the main event tonight. Vicky tries to assert her power and force Kofi Kingston to face Mysterio's opponent, Kane. Teddy puts her in her place. No, 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 no. Now, Vicky, you excuse me, all right? And says uh, Kofi's (laughs) not going to face Kane tonight. Uh, But Kofi's like, actually, I'm not a coward, man. I'll face Kane right now if that's what it takes. So... Before that match, we get this whole video package, which is basically the same video package we see at SummerSlam about Kane and Ray's mm-hmm. rivalry. And Kane ends up defeating Kofi pretty easily with a choke slam and a tombstone. 
Kane gets on the mic afterward yep. and says Ray attacked and incapacitated his brother. He basically just lays out the whole storyline again for everybody, saying Ray's going to pay for his actions, uh, attacking his brother back on Memorial Day. Uh, Kane talks about Undertaker uttering those two words, Ray Mysterio. Says he can't imagine the pain his brother must be enduring. But make no mistake, this Sunday, vengeance will be delivered by the devil's favorite demon. And Kane's about to do his big pyro blast. Uh, but Ray Mysterio actually interrupts him here. And it says that Kane claims to be the devil's favorite demon, but he is one of God's favorite servants. Uh, that nickname didn't quite catch on for Rey Mysterio, but I no, like it. did not. I'm good with it. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> um, anyway, Ray says if anyone had a motive to take out Undertaker, it was actually Kane. Who found the Undertaker? Who wrongfully Ooh. accused everyone of doing it? Who has been living in the shadow of their brother since they were born? Who actually had the most to gain? It was you, Kane. So Ray brings up a lot of good points here as this mystery yeah. thickens, deepens. And uh, Ray says they both know if Taker were here right now, the world title would be in his hands. But this Sunday, it's going to be in Ray's hands. And then finally, later on, main event, uh, Kane comes out midway through Ray and Dolph's match and rolls that empty casket he's had with him for a few months down to the ring. Uh, Ray ends up beating Dolph Ziggler. Kane tries to attack him afterward, but Ray 619s him before Kane gets in the ring and drop kicks Kane into the casket where he sits for half a second and then quickly hops out like he's scared of it and retreats to the yeah. top of the stage. So, as you said, Travis, they're building up all this. They're using the casket and everything. Why is this not a casket match? I have no idea. That would have made sense to have done it as a casket match, so... I got no clue. But anyway, uh, yeah, anyway, that's going to take us to the SummerSlam of uh, 2010. So this is, uh, I'll, I'll, why don't you talk about this since you actually watched it. So I did not watch this one live. Well, it may feel like this is our main event for tonight, but we've got a few more weeks after this to cover. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, this is uh, August 15, 2010. I uh, actually did watch this one live back in the day. Uh, like we mentioned before, you had uh, – Moved away from our hometown by this point, so uh, we still had another core group of folks watching the pay-per-views. Uh, this one was at my townhouse and had all the dudes over there, but we were really hyped up. Didn't really care about this match at the time, but we were hyped up for that Nexus right. versus Team WWE Team yeah. Raw match in the main event. Uh, I remember the week before that when they were building it up and the hard camera was literally shaking as the two teams mm -hmm. faced off in the ring together. And it, it was a heck of a hot angle there uh, before it, it completely was. died right here. Yeah. And, uh, man, this was the night D. Bry came back, right? from He was announced as the man on the smack on the uh, WWE side or whatever. So, yeah, yeah it was great, surprise. man. Made a huge heroes, like, welcome, like, really – you know, started his ascent to the top, you know, it's pretty cool. And uh, we both wrote in our notes that, uh, Michael Tarver is ahead of the curve, man, with the mask on. So. <laughs> he was, dude. <laughs> 10, Ten years, years too ahead. soon. The only yeah. good thing he ever did so, was, uh, wearing a mask. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, on this show, Kane has a backstage promo with the casket and the purple and red lights and saying he's going to put Ray in the casket and end his career tonight, which I just thought in my notes, like, did I miss something? Is this a casket match? No, I have no idea. But then nope. Sheamus comes in and shuts the thing, like shuts the casket, and they, I, I don't know, man. They talk about it, their matches, and Kane, Sheamus basically tells Kane to stay out of his way. I don't really know what the point of this whole thing was, but I couldn't stand it because Sheamus was in it. So It felt like one of those things they used to do. They don't really do it anymore, but it felt like a WrestleMania tease. And I was watching it back like, was that ever something like people no. were dying to see? Yeah. It felt like a, you know, Goldberg and Brock Lesnar seeing each other yeah. backstage. Is like, no thanks, guys. <laughs> Not mm. interested. I'll tell you what. You can keep your casket, but I'll take your nickname. Because people everywhere have been calling me the real Big Red Monster. 
So if you lose your match tonight, and you decide to go on those psychotic rampages from one champion to another, stay out of my way. <laughs> I like you. You've got guts. Most of which will be spilt out all over the floor if you ever interrupt me again. Well, Kane versus Mysterio for the WWE World Title is the next to last match on the card. After, right before that big ten man, or four, was it fourteen man tag? Was it seven on seven? Seven on was. seven. Uh, yeah. Well, Kane brings that red casket out to the ring with him, pushes it up against the ring, uh, opens it to reveal that no one's inside, and he closes it. So, And they have a really good match here, actually, for, for mm -hmm. these two guys. You know, yeah. Taker and Ray have good chemistry. Kane's not quite as you know great a chemistry as Ray, but he's got good chemistry with him you know, enough for a Kane match, and this is pretty good. So beats him clean after a choke slam and retain the world title, and then he... Gets on the mic and says, "You know, I, you know, I told you you're gonna pay for what you did, to Undertaker." And he goes over to the casket and lifts the lid, and once again, it's empty. And then Ray kind of fights back at him, and Kane slams the casket shut to go back to him. And uh, Kane hits two more choke slams on Rey Mysterio, so he's just owning the little man right here. Hits a tombstone on him, and he drags him over to the casket. He's gonna get ready to put him in. He's getting ready to put him in, and what do you know? The casket opens up. It's The Undertaker sitting up exactly. out of the casket for the first time since May of earlier this year. Oh, my God. Three months now. The Undertaker, and he looks awful. <laughs> it's like, he does, man. It's like Star K97 Sting. No tan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on tan, purpose. He's got bags under his eyes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. there is a reason for this. He looks very weak. He has literally been in a vegetative state, as they've been saying. That was not a misdirect. Apparently, he was actually in this state. So he gets up out, and uh, Kane is smiling at his brother as Taker stares at him and Kane points Undertaker towards Ray over in the corner and Undertaker walks toward him and gets in his face and they, you know he doesn't have a mic or anything but he, the camera is close enough that we hear Undertaker say have you ever heard an eye for an eye <laughs> and a tooth for a tooth before before I make things right. Why? Why'd you do it, Ray? And Undertaker is actually coughing as he's making mm -hmm. these remarks and selling that he is not himself here. As Ray swears that he didn't do it. He swears to Undertaker, it wasn't me. Yeah, he's like, you know, it wasn't me. And Taker, you know, they, they stand up in the corner. Taker, Taker lifts him up to a standing position by his throat, actually. Goozles him, picks him up. Taker does the throat slash, standing right there in front of Ray. And then he whips his head around like only Taker can do and looks at Kane. And Kane at this point is just shaking his head, just shaking his head. And then Taker does the old Hulk Hogan point at him. And when he does, the whole crowd goes, you, just like <laughs> yes, Hogan. Man. It was awesome. The crowd awesome. is hooked on so, this, man. They are they're, into this. Yeah. They are. I mean, this is in, what, L.A., right? The Staples Center, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's right. So they are, they're loving it, man. So, yeah, he points it at Kane and, you, and Taker goes over there and goozles Kane. And uh, Kane goozles him right back. But then Kane is actually able to take the Undertaker's hand off of his throat, showing Taker's weaknesses. And Kane drops Taker right here in the middle of the ring, with a tombstone just right on top of his head. And then Kane does his pyro, and grabs his world title, and kind of shakes his head and leaves. And, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy, you know? It's crazy uh, what's going on here. So Matt Stryker says, Am I my brother's keeper, or is the Holy Grail more important? He's trying to have this big, dramatic line. And Michael Cole immediately says, Well, I think that's obviously been answered. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bio Gold just totally undercuts Matt Strike. Yes. So Kane walks away. He's holding the big gold belt. 
high above his head, and the Undertaker is struggling like we've never seen him before, mm-hmm. trying to get to his feet. It's so dramatic. It's so unique. It's so hard when you've got a character like Undertaker who's been around for 20 years to do something different. And yeah. they the announcers always say, oh, we've never seen anything like this. And we note on here that we have. We see it all the time. But this right, this right here, this was actually unique we have never seen the undertaker Mm -hmm. quite like this yep it's going to just continue on during the story so all right well that brings us to smackdown following the summer slam august 20th 2010 kane is going to come out for his in-ring promo time to explain his diabolical plan you know he's got the red light on him he's cackling as there's like a a vocal effect on the like the microphone here seven deadly sins of these seven my favorite is and now always will be the sin of pride i don't know many people that have a favorite seven deadly sin but one of them <laughs> is kane so kane loves kane and the bad guy from the shazam movie <laughs> okay. seen that i have yes Okay. Well, he says, you know, when the devil removed himself from heaven and earth, he left behind seven deadly sins. My favorite is and always has been pride. You see, big brother, it was your pride that weakened your powers over your decade of destruction. It was your pride that allowed me to put you in a vegetative state. It was your pride that let me know you would come back before you were ready. And it was your pride that allowed me to drop you on your head at SummerSlam. So, Kane, really putting it out there. Um, he asks if Taker remembers how his downward spiral all began. And T- Kane says, for years, uh, I was just a vague memory. And at this point, throughout this promo, we we see footage from 97, 98. We're going to see some from, you know, them teaming up. It's just really cool how it's kind of cut in, spliced with yeah. this promo. It's very, again, very different from what you're used to seeing. It's not like... Show them the footage, you know, and like they don't cut to footage. It's just as he's talking, it's playing there for you. Really, really neat. I don't remember anybody really getting this treatment before, you know. That's what I'm saying. This whole thing is so extra. It's so over the top. Yeah. It's so, um, it, you know, it, it reminds you a lot of the current day. Cinematic before yeah. cinematic. Um, it would kind of, it would almost work really well in today's modern age without the fans and where they, you know, tape things beforehand and overproduce a lot of stuff. But it's uh, it's very different and very unique. And I think that's why I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. So, um, going with that, Kane says, it's the pride of an older brother keeping the younger one in the shadows. Uh, everything I did in the early years, Taker overcame. Your legend grew. And then we see highlights of Taker lighting, Kane on fire in the Inferno match. He says that, you know, that pushed Taker and it was his influence that pushed the dark side to the limits. Really talking about um, that was Taker's most magnificent moment, he said. And he said, you know, after that, I knew what I had to do. And that's when my master plan was set in motion. We see highlights of Taker's victories over the years, his big wins he's had. Um, and then we see. Uh, Kane says, you know, your victories grew, but your power was slipping. And he says, the day you forced me to remove my mask and show the world my face was the worst day, or excuse me, was the day the monster was unleashed and would end the reign of darkness. Was that was that SummerSlam 2000? I, I think I mixed it. I, got, I wrote 2002 in my notes, but I think it's 2000. It's SummerSlam 2000 that they show footage of, but they're kind of pretending right. that that's when Kane lost his mask, which was not for another two years which was right. on Raw yeah. against RVD. So that they, they definitely exactly. play fast and loose with a lot of the facts in this promo, but we, we'll give them some grace. Sure. I mean, they got a lot of convoluted history between these two anyway. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. But, you know, that did happen. Taker did take the mask. It did off happen. Kane that covered was real. his face. And, but that was not the big reveal where his hair was half shaved and all that stuff. So, anyway. But that was the day the monster was unleashed, he says. It's going to end the reign of darkness. Kane says when we met again at WrestleMania in 2004, 
it wasn't the right time for his plan. So he just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine, whatever. He's a heel, so, you know? He's just, yeah, you know. Exactly. He's lying. It says, you know, then I place myself at your side as the brothers of destruction to gain your trust. So we see highlights of them as they, you know, are tag teaming together. It's really cool they have all this, you know, years of footage, you know, and history to build upon, which is kind of neat. So, you know, he says, you know, uh, while t- while you were allowing s- yourself to be disgraced by those beneath you, I was biding my time. You know, I knew my time had come when, you, you know, that, excuse me, I knew the time had come when you showed Shawn Michaels an instant of mercy back at WrestleMania 26. And he's talking about when, you know, right before Shawn did the throat slash, when he pulls himself up on Taker's uh, waistband, Taker kind of looks at him and kind of like, come on. And then Sean does the throat slash and then he does the jumping tombstone. He's talking about that little instance right there when he showed mercy. That was when Kane decided to kick his plan into overdrive and actually make it come to fruition. So it says, you know, I knew that when I saw the shadow of your former self get out of the casket, you know, at SummerSlam, I, and I felt that weak grip on my throat, I knew my plan was finally finished. I had my vengeance. Vengeance that had eluded me for so long. Now, brother, the shadows are cast upon you. What was once your holy grail is now my World Heavyweight Championship. Undertaker. We used to be called the Brothers of Destruction. But now, you are nothing more than the brother that I destroyed. And again, dad joke. Love it, though. But like that, again, <laughs> coming from Kane in this context, it makes sense, man. I like it. So really, sure. really cool. And he says, you know, I've relished the thought of being the dominant brother. I knew this day would come for over 15 years. And, you know, I've replaced you. And he laughs. And we get this really weird voice distortion on his, his laughter as we go off here. It's, the um, you know that the pyro hits and we're we're down here. So, um, I personally wrote my notes like I, I it was neat to see that history play out during that promo. Again, a little rewritten history there, but um, it's it's cool too because another thing I just commented is like you know I'm not convinced. Like you mentioned, they did not have this penciled in when Taker went out. Like it's just no they built one, but like what an easy thing to go to. And sometimes we talked about, they go to the well too much, you know, with this kind of stuff, but they haven't faced us off on pay-per-view in six years. Right. I mean, since WrestleMania yeah. 2004, yeah. you know, we we're there. So, you know, it, it works. It may not be what you wanted to see or you thought you wanted to see, but they actually wind up turning this into something that's pretty cool. You know, uh, later on in the night, uh, Teddy Long is approached by Kane, and Kane uh, Teddy tells Kane that Taker's going to be at SmackDown next week, and so Kane says that next week SmackDown's going to be hell on earth. So there you go. Boom! SmackDown next week, August twenty seventh, two thousand ten. So uh, Kane actually defeats Rey Mysterio in a no DQ non title match after he choke slams him on a chair. So he's continuing to look strong here. Undertaker returns to SmackDown. And is the main event segment as it should be. And the Phenom says, although he may look dead, he ain't dead yet. Although he is still very much the dead man. And this is still exactly. his yard. He will never pardon the guilty, which brings him to his brother, Kane. Kane is guilty of a treacherous betrayal. A betrayal that he will pay dearly for. And he has a diseased soul, a disease that has festered and turned into a web of lies. So as Undertaker is doing all this, he's actually very subtly coughing through this whole Mm -hmm. promo. He's coughing and he's choking up and he's really selling the exhaustion of everything. Uh, Selling that he's not 100%. Undertaker says the biggest lie of them all that Kane has said is that he can carry his holy grail. So Kane actually interrupts Undertaker here and he stands at the top of the ramp and says the only person spinning a web of lies is you, big brother. He says Taker is no longer the phenom. He's not even a shadow of what he once was. And he'll crush Undertaker under his boot as he's living in a fantasy. Kane screams, I'm bigger than you, I'm stronger than you, I'm the dominant brother, and I have nothing left to prove. So Taker goes back and forth with him, saying, You called yourself the devil's 
favorite demon. Well, Cain, have you forgotten or have you just chose to forget that the house that the devil lives in, I built brick by fiery brick. And when I come calling, the devil still answers to me with, sir. It's just one of the best Jeez. lines Chris <laughs> yeah. ever said. <laughs> yeah. Come on. That's, that's the ministry like promo right there, man. Come on. It answers me with sir. That's, that's like a great. Chuck Norris joke right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, Taker says, you know, I taught you everything you know about evil, but I didn't teach you everything that I know, which is uh, another great line right there. So, uh, Kane says that um, Undertaker says when the fight starts this time, it's going to end the same way that it always does. Mm. Which is, you know, if we go back and look at the facts, Undertaker has always beaten Kane. And Kane mm-hmm. says, not this time. Uh, I know you, and I know that this time will end the same way it did at SummerSlam with you sprawled helpless at my feet. And Kane makes a vow on their mother and father. Or, excuse me. Kane makes a vow on their mother that the Undertaker will never rest in peace. Because I know for a fact that they do not share the same father. Something that Matt Stryker is going to forget. Not on this episode, but we'll get to that next week okay. on our next week's episode. Because he really pissed me off during the Hell in the Cell match. <laughs> Completely ruined their history. But Kane cackles as Undertaker stares him down, and uh, we're actually going to head over to Raw for one week here for a special yeah. celebration. Yeah, this is Raw, uh, August 30th. This is Raw's 900th anniversary, or whatever Ooh. you want to call it, 900th episode. So Bret Hart opens up the show, uh, talks about being on the very first episode of Raw, and there's only one other guy here that was you know left standing who was there too. That's The Undertaker, which is pretty cool to think about. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, he's about to invite Taker out, but Kane actually interrupts, comes out, uh, not wearing the world title though, which kind of ticked me off a little bit. Like, why does he not have that? I don't understand. Champion should always have it with him. So, yeah. Anyway, Kane says Taker is no more, and he's no longer phenomenal in any way. He's just a man. The crowd's chanting for Taker. Taker says Kane is like Brett, just like Brett. He's weak, feeble, scraggly, over the hill, and irreversibly damaged. So, yikes! Mm. <laughs> One of those lines. Those lines came from Vince, you think? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> just uh, what? <laughs> but anyway, says the last time that he was truly the Undertaker was at WrestleMania when he ended Sean's career, and he says, "I, you must have loved that, didn't you, Brett? And uh, you must be, you know, have savored seeing Sean go down." And Brett says, "The only thing I'm savoring is watching, or that I'm going to savor is watching Taker get his hands on you and defeat him, defeat you like he always does." So giving it right back to Kane here, I like it. So. Kane's like, you know what? You sound like Taker, you know? Uh, and I, it, I'm going to suggest that you get out of my shadow. Or, no. He says, going to get out of Taker's shadow, sorry. And he says, you know, Taker took out an icon in Shawn Michaels, so Kane needs to do the same. I'm going to take you out. So he goozles Bret Hart, but the Hart dynasty slides in. And Bret fights back a little bit, but Kane goozles him. Then the gong hits. The lights go out. The lights come back up. Taker's standing in the middle of the ring. So we don't get his whole entrance and stuff. He's just going to do his spooky entrance. Uh, they stare each other down, and then Kane kind of smirks, shakes his head, like, nah. And he does that, the, you know, the way he used to exit the ring all the time back in the late <laughs> 90s, where he puts his arm over the top rope and just kind of flips backwards over it. Right. And he says, not yet, big brother. Not yet. So... He's not ready, you know, not ready. Not but then, uh, and and I quote, he tells us that tonight we're going to see Bret Hart versus The Undertaker. So that's like, I was watching this. I was like, what? I don't remember <laughs> this at all. Um, so Bret and Taker kind of stare at each other like, all right. And then later on, Brett comes out looking like Raven. He's got his jorts on, his black shirt, leather jacket. And Cosplaying, like, yes. man. <laughs> exactly. Cosplaying Quote the Raven. Raven. Never more. <laughs> Didn't he? He looked just like him. Yeah, I'm, yes. Great. We both wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, man. 
<laughs> so uh, anyway, um, you know, this is supposed to be a big match befitting the 900th episode of Raw. So we're going to get something, you know, big that, you know, to fill the shoes of, you know, Raw's anniversary here. So we're going to get fake Raven versus Taker. So, But you Taker know something's going to happen because Brett can't yes. wrestle. Yeah, and it's only like been 30 minutes since the opening promo. It has, it's not even like late into the, the show. It's like maybe a third of the way through the, the you know the first hour. So anyway, before they get started, though, for this match, Wade Barrett comes out to the Nexus music, which I really I forgot about the that music. I kind of dug it back then. It's but, on um, my running playlist, like, man. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, like no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> this match is not happening. This, you know, he talks some trash on both the guys and gets in the ring, and then Taker just doesn't wait. He just goozles, or he just starts unloading on him, punching him, big boot, clotheslines away, and then he turns to Brett. And before he can, you know, go to, you know, to fight Brett, the gong hits, the lights go out, lights come back up. Kane is in the ring now, so he's mimicking his brother's powers here. So he and Taker start slugging it out in the middle of the ring. Taker goozles Kane, the gong hits, the lights go out, the lights come back up, and now Kane is gone. So he's got mind games going on his brother here. And then yep. the Nexus music hits again, and we got, you know, the Nexus come out. It's Gabriel, Slater, Otunga, and Michael Tarver, and they swarm Taker, and he fights them off for a second. The gong hits again, the lights <laughs> go out, the lights come back up, and Wade Barrett now has Taker up on his shoulders like a... Like I like I added to adjustment or whatever, but he does his finishing move, which is called the Wasteland, and uh, hits it on Taker. And Taker is writhing in pain, like he's like he's you know been shot by a bullet. Like he's really selling that you know that he's in a weakened state here. And then you know, perfect Nexus ending here. Justin Gabriel goes up top, hits the 450 on Taker, takes him forever to hit it. They really sell and drag this out for a while. Hits the 450. Kane's watching from the top of the ramp kind of nod in approval and taker's trying to sit up but he can't he collapses really just showing you know his mortality that he's had since he came back from this vegetative state so um uh kane's cackling and it's just uh it's crazy man crazy to see so it definitely uh along with something that we'll get to in a couple weeks it felt like the beginning of something bigger here with wade barrett and the undertaker yes. i would have sworn that they had those two penciled in to face off at WrestleMania 27. Sure. I, maybe even having Barrett be the guy to break the streak. Like they had seemed like they had huge plans for him, but uh, it doesn't quite work out that way. I mean, it's hard to believe for me that Barrett never even held the world title. And uh, apparently he's coming back no. to NXT to do commentary, but otherwise he's yeah, basically this- retired. As of this recording, we haven't seen NXT yet, but as of the time this drops, NXT will have passed. So, yeah, ho- hopefully he was on NXT a couple days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I would not mind seeing him get back in the ring again. I always, always liked him. What if he says, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Bad news. news. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, uh, we're gonna ta- <laughs> let's try to take this into hyperdrive and get to this paper. Oh, we just got crap. a few more weeks to go here. Uh, so like we said, so much story to cover, but uh, three more weeks till the pay per view. SmackDown, September third, two thousand ten. Kane is in his casket closet backstage, cackling, and uh, he says that his brother, the Undertaker, uh, will be the it will be the end of his very existence at Night of Champions. Kane's gonna defend the title against him. It'll be the crowning moment of his life. He's kind of repeating a lot of the same lines that he's repeated over and over mm-hmm. again. And as Kane is cackling, I mean, if you think the Fiend laughs a lot on WWE television in 2020, go watch Kane in 2010 because yep. that's where it came from. Dude, just yep. <laughs> over and over again. Oh, As yeah. he's cackling, we hear the Latin chanting, and some druids bring a casket out into the arena. And the arena is bathed in that purple light, and they place the casket by ringside, and we get these crazy visual effects, like footage of the Undertaker from the past, and distortion, and all this stuff on the screen. And the casket opens, 
and it's actually Kane inside as his music begins to play and the arena is bathed in the Kane red light. And he continues to cackle and laugh as he wish as he wishes he could see the look on his brother's face right now when he realizes there's nothing he can do to stop him. So Kane is trying to prove that he's stolen the Undertaker's powers. He's doing all the things that Undertaker used to do. Uh we hear the gong, the Undertaker's music goes off, his video begins to play, but Kane is smiling in the ring as Taker comes all the way out to the ring, and as Undertaker steps through the ropes, the lights go out. They come back on, Kane is gone. Undertaker is all by himself, and he's frustrated and upset. He walks over to the red casket, and Taker still subtly coughing uh, throughout all of this and he opens mm-hmm. the lid but the casket is empty and we go back up to the big screen as Kane is backstage cackling and says Taker may not may have taught him everything he knows about evil but he's wrong to assume that he has anything more to learn and again repeats that line that they may be called the brothers of destruction but after a night of champions he will soon just be the brother he destroyed and his flames shoot up and the show goes off the air yeah, and again, the point is being that Kane's got Taker's powers now, kind of. He's got him in a weakened state, and he's kind of transferred the powers over to himself. So that's kind of where we're going in the next couple of weeks. So SmackDown, September 10th, show opens with the gong. The lights go out. Taker's in the ring, uh, not even wasting time on his entrance. He just, boom, there. There we go. So he says Kane has always been a disturbed freak of nature, and he's always had to protect him from others and from himself. You tapped me like a coward. You left me unconscious. You gave, but this gave you a false sense of confidence, and now you think you've got the momentum. Uh, you know, Taker says he's still got the power. He's in control, and not a champion. So remember how you stop, how I stopped your reign of terror when you look and take back my world title. Taker says he can't wait for that night, and he needs this fight to be a no holds barred. So he says, "What do you say, little brother? Are you in?" And then CM Punk's music hits, and he comes out clapping, just clapping. And Shrekker tells us that Punk and Taker are facing off t- later tonight. Because I was like, what is going on here? Where the <laughs> heck is this coming from? But yeah, yeah, thank you, yeah. Stryker, for giving me a little context of what's happening. So um, anyway, Punk basically tells people, you know, go ahead and give him a standing ovation. Because after Night of Champions, we'll never see him again. So he and Taker go back and forth. And Taker says, when I look at you, I see my next victim. And Punk's like, you know, you don't scare me anymore. Um, I'm going to send a message to my... Not a champion's opponent. Big show. I beat you tonight. So um, he says, I'm the only one that's ever made you tap out. So, you know, I'm going to beat you again tonight. So that's the main event. Gets a lot of time. Uh, great mm-hmm. job selling his weekend state. You know, Taker's gasping for air, coughing, doing all that. You know, it really doesn't look like the Taker of WrestleMania 26, which is peak performance Taker. Doesn't look like that guy anymore. So really, yeah. again, kudos to him for playing this new nuance of a character up. It's awesome. So... He uh, finally makes it to his feet. I'm sorry. He winds up making Punk tap in Hell's Gate, and then he can't even get back to his feet really, really quickly. He finally gets you know, gets back, and commentary is like, you know, I wonder if he came back from his vegetative state too soon. You know, which Kane mentioned a few weeks ago. So, Taker goes for the Shakespeare pose, but he, as he does it, Kane's pyro and music go off, and we hear Kane laughing throughout the arena as we fade to black. So. So that More mind games. finally takes us to the go-home show for Night of Champions 2010. Hope you guys are still with us and not in a vegetative state yet. But um, basically, going to be a lot of the same here. Uh, one last promo leading into things. Uh, Kane makes his way out, reminds us that this Sunday will be the final chapter of him and Undertaker's rivalry, which, nope. <laughs> we got two more weeks nope. of it here coming up. Uh, this time, The Undertaker will not summon the power of the dark side and vanquish his opponent. Uh, this time, Kane will be the author of The Undertaker's Demise. This time, it will end the way that it started with Undertaker sprawled helpless at his feet. And this time, not only will I emerge from Might of Champions, still world heavyweight champion. But the plot that I had 13 years ago will be realized when the Undertaker, the Phenom, becomes nothing more than a distant memory. This time, it 
ends on my terms. Last week, Undertaker, you said that our match must be no holds barred. <laughs> and that's exactly what I wanted. Once again, big brother, your pride has played right into my hands. Because there are no limits, no rules, no holds barred. As Bruce Pritchard would say. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I could think exactly. of. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Me too. Uh, gong. Undertaker comes out. No rope. No hat. Ready to fight. Stares down mm-hmm. Kane as he steads into the ring. Lights go out. Come back on. Now Kane is standing behind Undertaker. And he's got the world title in his hands. He nails Undertaker with it. Unloads on him. Beats him up all around the ring. Yeah. Undertaker gets in a few punches, but he's just clearly no match for Kane here. Uh, the crowd is into it. They've been into it every week, man. Mm-hmm. And they're chanting for Taker, but he's clearly in this weekend state. And Kane does something really cool here. And the announcers even pointed out, which I appreciated. I thought they might not mention it, but Kane does the Undertaker's moves of doom. Uh, he does the big yep. boot. He does snake eyes. And does the signal for the choke slam and connects with it. So he runs through all of Undertaker's standard offense. Not just the choke slam and tombstone. He does some of those other signature moves there mm-hmm. to taunt and tease Undertaker. I really thought that was cool. And uh, the crowd's trying to chant for Taker to recover, but he just can't get up as Kane delivers him a tombstone and does that Shakespeare pose one last time as the Kane pyro erupts from the turnbuckles. And we go off the air and we finally reach our main event for tonight. Praise God. Night of Champions 2010. (laughs) Yeah, and I just wrote my notes. Like I don't think I've ever seen taker manhandled like that like left with so much sympathy on him for pay-per-view because one yeah. of the knocks we have with some of his stuff is even when he's the baby face he'll get all he'll get that baby face heat baby like going to the pay-per-view which for no reason but here kane gets all of the heat like a heel should going into a pay-per-view and it's you know spoiler alert he's going to take the heat with him as he leaves too so it's not the end of this chapter here but yeah not a champions 2010 uh, September 19th, 2010, from the All-State Arena in Chicago. Great crowd this night. Oh, great, yeah. great crowd. And the only Always. match I've ever seen from this pay-per-view is uh, Daniel Bryan and Miz. And uh, great, phew, what a great, great storytelling in there. Great uh, culmination of Daniel Bryan's return. Uh, but I do remember wishing that Wade Barrett would have walked away with that WWE title and that six-pack challenge. But never saw this match. Didn't care too much about the storyline at the time, honestly. I'm loving going back and revisiting it. 10 years later it's been it's been a blast to revisit yeah to me you know this just goes to show that um you know when you read about stuff online it doesn't always give you the full flavor of things because i always read the smackdown recaps and you know i'd read dave Meltzer and brian alvarez and you know they would crap on stuff like this so that just 